So I always think it's really funny whenever somebody is watching something that I'm ever doing, especially when it comes to looping, and someone's like, Oh my god, cracked! Or you're juicing the killer! Because, in all honesty, I literally and 100% believe that every single person watching this can do exactly what I just did. Now, winning the 50-50s might be a, a win or loss scenario, and that's not going to happen all the time, that you're just going to keep winning them, but just running in the exact same, like, circles that I run in. That's why I think it's so funny when somebody thinks that I'm like cracked or I'm juicing and it's like literally every single one of you guys can do this too. And if we could get more people to be able to learn that stuff, we could constantly have more people playing the game and getting into the game instead of being like, I don't want to learn Survivor. It's going to take me way too long. It's going to take me thousands of hours to be able to learn which circles to run into and which places to stop so I can see when it really shouldn't. It's literally super simple. It's just when you have 40 plus maps up to 50 if you count them in a specific way and 35, soon to be 30 six killers it takes a long time especially when there's rng involved with the maps themselves but really a lot of the times when it comes to looping it's just all about map knowledge and then if you want to run as safe as you can you can and that just completely minimizes the amount of 50 50s you run into in general or if you want to feel really saucy you can run right to that unsafe palette the most unsafe tile you can find in the entire map and see how much value you can get out of it you can have fun doing either or but the big pain when it comes to trying to learn survivor is literally just learning the maps and we had a perfect example of a chase the other day where it would be like, it sounds impressive on paper, 5 gen chase against a P hunter trickster, no perks, solo queue, no pallets thrown. Try to see if you can even see anything in that chase that looks like you couldn't immediately try and loop as well. Now you might not win the 50-50, but you could immediately do all the things that I just did. And that's what I mean and why I think it's funny when somebody thinks I'm a cracked survivor or I'm juicing the killer. I'm like, literally anybody can do this and, you're, and you're, it just comes down to winning the 50-50s. With that being said, let's get into the exact loop that happened. It was on the storehouse. This is the first map I ever realized was OP. I ran by this window over here specifically so many times thinking this window was just trash. And then one day a Bubba pushed me the right way and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, this is one of the best windows in the entire game. And that's kind of just how DBD works in general. That's why it takes thousands of hours because there's nothing to explain it to you. This one is always here, but a lot of maps you might loop this window this time and then the next time it's a different window because it's a 50-50 whether it's this window or another one. Not with the case of this one, which is why it's a good one to learn in the first place. But at the same time, that's the main thing leading into why it takes thousands of hours to be able to run the right circles. So let's just get right to it. The first loop that you're gonna wanna start off with is the big window. They're gonna break that door and this window is nowhere near as strong. You can get one or two loops out of it and I mean just running. The killer cannot mind game it because you can see them right through that glass. They can see you two as well, which is going to be very important when it comes to paying attention to which way the killer's going. Because you really want to pay attention to which way the killer comes around. If they're chasing you around this way, I like to take this path, I think it's the shortest, but you want to pay attention to which way the killer comes. Because I want to know if I want to feel saucy and not play it safe and go to that window, but I want to use one of these two things to turn around, you have to know which way the killer's going to go. Because that's one of the only two secrets with this storehouse that is a little bit lesser known that can help a lot. But you want to run this window once or twice, and it's really Big, so you're not going to get a ton of actual loops out of it because the killer's going to catch up since you have to walk all the way around there and then you're going to want to switch around to this window over here now if you want to play it safe you run that window over there once and then you run the direction i just did to come to this window over here and then you can do it this way and you have a good checkpoint right here because they can't sneak around there you can see the window and they can't sneak there so this is a good checkpoint here and then you end up can just going this way but what happens if you overestimated how many loops around you had going this way. And that's why you need to have paid attention to see which way the killer went. Because if the killer walks around this and comes towards this window from this direction over here, then you're gonna wanna use this one right here to turn it around. Or you can still use this one right here if you want. But the problem is you're not gonna wanna use this one to turn it around if they come right around and go down this way. Which is why you wanna run this way because they can see you and they'll think that's the shortest path and they'll run this way as well. Because let's say you did overestimate how far you were in front of the killer and you weren't gonna make it to this window again. And it's too late to come around this way and run all the way around this way, right? Come around this way, and it's way too far. You're not gonna make it if you weren't gonna make it to the other window to make it this way to get the running vault. And if you're running from this direction, this window sucks. And this is why I always thought this window sucks, because I'm like, okay, that window sucks. And if you're running, if you're only running from this way, you're like, dude, that window goes nowhere. But that's what these right here is for. And this is the first trick to the storehouse, is after you've ran it a few times, and if you see the killers coming around this way, and you knew, because you saw before, that they were coming around this way, then you can just turn it right back around this way, and then run right here. <laughs> and 
and now they're coming that way, and we just turned it right back around, and we're looping the storehouse the direction we wanted to do it, and now we're looping it the exact way. And sometimes you break line of sight, and you only want to loop it out and then get the running vault if you don't want. This is one of those windows where it's perfectly sized, where a lot of times if you just loop as tight as possible, you don't even go for the running vault, you can break line of sight, especially because those two lockers right there counts as breaking the line of sight. So you can just get the vault and keep going around. And then another good check spot for that window right here, because once you have turned it around, even if you overestimated, because like I said, even if using this one doesn't count, because if you use this way and they went around this way, same thing, you can run and go that way. Or once again, you can use this one, but this one's a little bit riskier, as I was saying. But once you had turned it around and you're running the window the way you wanted to, that's what this checkpoint right here is for. Because if you stand right here conveniently, you can see both sides and they cannot sneak up on you. And you, if, if you're into the whole walking tech thing, you don't even have to do that because you won't be full speed yet. But if you're in a whole walking tech thing, if they like jumped around, you can walk around the corner and then run and then try to make it around this corner. The one downside is, and a lot of killers don't know this, but you can initiate chase by staring at them through this window. The amount of killers that could have gotten looped less if they knew that to just stare at me through the window that would have initiated chase to block this window would have saved so many loops on that specific window. So now that we know how to loop the storehouse, both windows, because you can run this window either direction, I was saying, this window, this direction you can run tight, the other one you already run in the right direction, so running tight will get you the running vault anyway. And now that you know that this one is one of the strongest windows in all of DBD, and then this one is the one that you start off with, loop this one once or twice and then push around and then cut to the window using this if you really want to feel saucy, and if not, you only get the one loop and then run around this long way and back towards the window. But that leaves how to use the pallet, which is the most important secret on this. Because this pallet's not the most safe pallet. It's long, and if you throw it, you can sort of camp here and jump. But at the same time, you're stuck going back to this side-by-side -side thing. It's one of those pallets that you can see through, but barely. So you, yeah, you can see through that, and then you can see through that part there, and then you can see through this part here. That's really hard, and especially if you're going to try to get it in the chase. And it is possible, but it's hard to actually get it, especially if it's like a shorter killer, and then it's really hard to see it. So you don't really want to loop this part because it's easy to like get mind-gamed. So what you do instead, especially because you can't see over that, is loop this right here. A lot of killers, you can see them over this right here. And you can just run one or two loops maybe and then cut into the pallet and get them to mind game themselves. You might be able to make around the corner. If they mind game themselves really hard and push that way, you might even be able to make it back around this way to that window over there once more. Around this way. Loop this thingy and then back to this thingy. But the amount of times I could have saved a hit Thousands of hours ago, if I had just thought to loop this right here, this pile of crates, where you can literally see the killer in a better way, and then push right into here, and then greed the pallet, or throw the pallet if you want to. And it definitely helped against that trickster that, that is going to be the example, Chase, that you're going to see in a little bit, because he couldn't throw the knives over this. Whereas if you're going to loop this even, this is definitely far enough to get hit by one knife, on top of the fact that you can get mind gamed easily. So this was blocking the line of sight for him to be even able to throw the knife. Same with Huntress or something like that, because that's long enough to throw a hatchet really over. But they can't really do much if they're pushing you this way, right? Because even if you pushed around this way, they have to get around the corner, and you might not. they might be able to hit you there, but that's a harder shot, and it's way tighter than it would be trying to hit the length of these two sides. So this is the only other secret I'd say about the storehouse is looping this part right here and then cutting into the palace since it provides such better line of sight and looping these things here in case you overestimated getting back to this window and you're not going to make it and then you can camp these corners and study the killer from the first loop around to see which way they went so that you know which way you can push around to jump this window. And that's it. That is literally it. That's as hard as it is. And this is exactly what I'm saying and why we had the perfect example chase to be able to prove the point that I'm saying. Because it sounds like super cracked survivor, right? Looping that P hunter trickster with no perks and solo queue, didn't even have to throw a pallet. But then watch this. Watch this chase and see if you can find a single thing in this chase that looks like you can't immediately do as well as I did. Doesn't mean you'll win the 50-50s, but you can't immediately do exactly as well as I just did. And that's what I mean by anybody can do anything I ever do. Chase me main. Does he have boozle? What do I do if he does? He does not. Yay, running ball. Thank you for that follow, whoever that was. I can't look at it yet, but I'll get to it in a second. Can he hit through that? He can hit through that. Nice. Oh god. Do this one. Oh, he's so close. It's now blocked.
Good shit. Oh god, it's still blocked. My dumbass, I forgot it was blocked. It was like, easy, back to the window. He's not tall enough to use this, I was hoping. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ah! It's locked now. Back to the other one. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Damn, we got in chase though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no! We got a chase. God, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, that was so close. To, well, I'm counting that. That was a five gen chase. That gen could have totally been done. <laughs> that was a five gen chase. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I can't nod back.
That P hundred trickster just got ran for five gens. <laughs> That's hilarious.